our mind from all outside diversions and turn it towards the divine supreme shining in our hearts at the lotus center let us all keep our mind there for some time and pray for the welfare of the whole humanity shanti shanti hari hi om tat sat peace 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 be unto all om स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम असतो मदगमय तमसो म असतो मदगमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्यो let us offer our salutations to sri ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions the personification of purity and perfection who brought harmony among religions oneness running through all the various religions of the world it is by following his teachings his practical instructions we would be able to go ahead from unreal to the real it is not so easy to get rid of our false identification towards the things of the world it is not easy so we are suffering if we have to be freed from suffering it follows that we must have definite ways of getting freedom the definite ways are being shown or being given by shri ramakrishna these are not simply theories shri ramakrishna has given practical ways which he himself had lived through so these become very relevant very important for people like us here is the nectar why not we have the sip of it and enjoy the immortal bliss here is a person a holy saint an incarnation 
who is showing by his realization what exactly the meaning of peace and bliss is it possible to experience that how that person would like here is shri ramakrishna who every now and then would go into ecstatic state and who would show to the people that that is the real state for which we all have to aspire for so the goal of human life is to love god that is the essence of all the religions wherever they are shri ramakrishna came to establish this wonderful harmony among the religions the essence of all the religions is to love god that element of love which is already in every one of us should develop very nicely when once we develop that love there can be no more disharmony no more no more religious intolerance it is unthinkable it is a greatest tragedy that violence is being perpetuated in the name of religion greatest tragedy it is going on if we don't analyze and fix different ways there is no hope so in the chapter 2 which we have started last week shri ramakrishna clearly has given instructions don't claim that your watch alone is correct don't claim that your religion is superior to all others why do you claim that what do you achieve by that is the purpose of religion to claim the superiority is that the purpose of the religion not at all the purpose of the religion is to love god to realize him to enjoy peace and bliss and share with all the people that is how religion is to be understood that is how the religion is to be practiced whatever path we may follow it is only through the grace of the divine mother the divine supreme we would achieve our goal the divine grace doesn't flow unless we develop love unless we get rid of hatred unless we our mind gets purified of all these thorny impressions the samskaras accumulated in the mind unless the mind is purified thoroughly you can't expect any love towards god you can't we talk one thing we behave in another way but a spiritual person cannot do that way rather he seldom talks shows by his way of life he is more practical than theoretical he is more serious he is more sincere about achieving the target rather than diverting the mind in all sorts of useless worthless argumentations debates etc shri ramakrishna many times would say what is the purpose of all these holy scriptures all over the world innumerable scriptures are there once you know the purpose of it why not just step into practice right away why do you postpone your life do you think that life which you are having today can you do you think you can get the same life tomorrow how are you sure 
when we have got the opportunity at hand if we don't use it it is last forever it is last forever the opportunity given is last so the scriptures the holy people holy association all these help us so that we can make use of our opportunity to the best of our capacity not simply wasting our life wasting our life if you don't develop love towards god i should say we are very unfortunate very unfortunate simply loving one son kitan kin is not the sign of love a person who loves god loves everybody not only his kitan kin but every one in the creation not only the living beings not only the humans even the animals he feels highly sympathetic towards the whole creation he feels identified with the whole universe that's it that conception we should have when we practice religion dharmatma he who is practicing religion should become dharmatma his self is completely in dharma he doesn't deviate even to the slightest extent from the path of righteousness he is very particular about it and we must pursue the religious path with so much of zeal do you think otherwise it is easy to fight this uh, bad samskaras so shri ramakrishna he tells you people why do you quarrel why do you degrade the value of religion that only shows your mind is in a very poor condition poor mind cannot experience anything regarding spiritual life so we must love god we must pray to god with a yearning heart with a yearning heart again shri ramakrishna gives the example how to love god just as the milkmaid the people of brindavan how did they love shri krishna we must have that intensity of love towards god they couldn't bear the separation of krishna when he went to mathura they couldn't bear terrible anguish they were so much earnest their their whole mind was on krishna so we must develop that love the path of bhakti is the path of love which is compared to other paths is easy whereas jnana reasoning no doubt it's a path but rather very difficult how many people can have right type of reasoning the ego comes up rises up its head ugly head and he thinks he's all wise and all the others are fools this kind of egoistic attitude is very harmful the more your spiritual means the more you are free from all this boastful ideas nothing humbug would work there because the divine lord is observing everything he is observing every thought wave in us how because he is residing in our heart you can't do anything without his knowledge that's the point so shri ramakrishna 
explaining the importance of this bhakti began to sing a song so full of deep meaning and when he sang his eyes were wet with tears eyes were wet with tears so are we having that kind of relationship with the divine being we should question ourselves so as students of sri ramakrishna we must be very careful in every minute aspect of spirituality every sentence every word which sri ramakrishna uttered is extremely important for us extremely important for us so to believe in sri ramakrishna is to follow his instructions that's the meaning of belief otherwise belief means nothing so sri ramakrishna has given these practical hints for us to follow then we are sure to get into the realm of spirituality we are sure to go away from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge we are sure to conquer death we would no more be afraid of death rather death would be afraid of us we would understand the meaning of immortality what exactly it means we achieve that goal everything we can have sri ramakrishna is the container of all spiritual treasures he is ready to share everything with us but are we ready to follow his instructions that's a very important question today i shall continue next these are all my observations of my last week's class after reading this i will ask for your observations and comments whatever you want to ask whatever you want to say you are welcome shri ramakrishna was sitting in the drawing room of keshav chandra sen's house in calcutta it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon When Keshav was told of his arrival he came to the drawing room dressed to go out for he is about to call on a sick friend now he cancelled this plan the master said to him you have so many things to attend to besides you have to edit a newspaper you have no time to come to dakshineshwar so what i have come to you see the grace of the lord that's the grace when i heard of your illness i vowed green coconut and sugar to the divine mother for your recovery i said to her mother if something happens to keshav with whom shall i talk in calcutta Sri Ramakrishna spoke to Pratap and the other Brahmo devotees. Yam was seated nearby, pointing to him. The master said to Kesha, "Will you please ask him why he doesn't come to the Kshneshwar any more? He repeatedly tells me he is not attached to his kith and kin." M had been praying paying visits to the master for about a month his absence for a time from the kshneshwar called forth this remark here sri ramakrishna is hinting how it is very important that we should keep up that holy association regularly he was telling he is pointing out that 
because yam could not come giving some maybe some reasons are there but shri ramta doesn't want to take those reasons into consideration he said what is the priority the priority is this one once you lose this this holy association then it will be very difficult for your mind to get into the same state again so to give importance to he is pointing out the importance of holy association by this statement shri ramakrishna had asked him to write to him if his coming were delayed see how shri ramakrishna was deeply concerned about the disciples about the seekers after spirituality about those who want spiritual life about whom shri ramakrishna wanted to give training spiritual training he was very very shrewd pandit samadhyayi was present the brahmo devotees introduced him to shri ramakrishna as a scholar well versed in the vedas and the other scriptures the master said yes i can see inside him through his eyes one can see the objects in a room through the glass door trilokya sank suddenly the master stood up and went into samadhi ecstatic state repeating the mother's name coming down a little to the plane of sense consciousness he danced and sank i drink no ordinary wine but wine of everlasting bliss as i repeat my mother kali's name it so intoxicates my mind that people take me to be drunk first my guru gives molasses for the making of the wine my longing is the ferment to transform it knowledge the maker of the wine prepares it for me then and when it is done my mind imbibes it from the bottle of the mantra taking the master's mother's name taking the mother's name to make it pure drink of this wine says ram prasad and the four fruits of life are yours what are the four fruits dharma artha kama moksha whatever you want you get everything those who would come to shri ramakrishna would feel that intoxicating effect god intoxicated state shri ramakrishna was always god conscious so those who would come to him would also get intoxication they would feel they are in a different environment different world altogether the presence of shri ramakrishna the supreme god himself on earth in human form ready to show his grace to one and all irrespective of whatever religion or caste or creed one follows that's the beauty of shri ramakrishna he doesn't want anybody to convert one religion to another swadharme so one is is it is rather preferable to die in one religion than to practice the other swadharme so nidharam shreya paradharmo bhayavah the point here is that whatever path you are following follow it thoroughly don't divert your attention to other things that's all what you wanted to say all different types of people belonging to different religions would come to shri ramakrishna they all mingled in shri ramakrishna as different rivers finally mingle in ocean 
all the different spiritual seekers practicing different religions would all come to Sri Ramakrishna. He would absorb every body into his bosom. Sri Ramakrishna's heart has got place for everyone. We must know that. Those who recognize it, they will have the value of this achievement which Sri Ramakrishna did during his lifetime. So, he is integrating all religions. He has come to integrate all religions. He has come to show not to quarrel one another in the name of religion, but to be friendly with every body. The earlier we understand this, the better for, for us, for the peace of the world. So in this respect, it is rather our important duty, so to say, to spread the message of Sri Ramakrishna all over the world, broadcast the truth. Those who are fortunate, let them take. Even if one in one million, even in one in so many countries take these ideas, it is remarkable. The Master looked at Keshav tenderly, as if Keshav were his very own. He seemed to fear that Keshav might belong to someone else. That is to say, that he might become a worldly person. Looking at him, the Master sang again. We are afraid to speak, and yet we are afraid to keep still. Our minds, or rather, half believe that we are about to lose you. We tell you the secret that we know, the secret whereby we ourselves and others with our help have passed through many a time of peril. Now it all depends on you. Quoting the last part of the song, he said to Keshav, that is to say, renounce everything and call on God. He alone is real. All else is illusory. Without the realization of God, everything is futile. This is the great secret. The master sat down again and began to converse with the devotees. For a while, he listened to a piano recital, enjoying it like a child. Then he was taken to the inner apartments where he was served with refreshments and the ladies saluted him. As the master was leaving Keshav's house, Brahma devotees accompanied him respectfully to his carriage. I think we should stop here. Now I shall ask uh, your uh, comments and observations. I want to share your ideas also in this. Wonderful. It's, it is uh, really 100% true. It is true. No doubt about it. That is why it is so appealing to anybody. One may belong to any religion. Let him read it with an open mind, not with a bigoted attitude. With an open mind, let him read the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. It has got a remarkable effect. Remarkable. You are right. Anybody else? See, everybody has got different levels of mind. It's true. It is true. But then, that is why we always uh, stress upon the Holy Association to discuss the points, the various aspects of the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna and how to interpret them properly. So that requires uh, sharpness of intellect, that requires uh, cultural training, intellectual training is required. We must have uh, sufficient knowledge of uh, other religions also then only you will be able to understand the aspects of uh, other religions and how we can reconcile all these ideas 
and uh, as uh, Sri Ramakrishna himself uh, has pointed out how he could draw the Brahmos, the Brahmos he would call uh, jokingly as modern Brahmagyanis who are influenced by English education. He, he just, uh, he took them also into his fold. And Keshu Chandra Sen, who was uh, the foremost among the Brahmos, which was a very important movement in those years when Sri Ramakrishna lived, but how he gave them good direction towards spiritual life. Instead of uh, meditating uh, on nothingness, instead of understanding uh, God uh, improperly, Sri Ramakrishna corrected them. Sri Ramakrishna corrected them. Many times you will hear, in the, you will see in the passage also, how God is full of peace and bliss, how we should uh, have that vision of uh, seeing God in everything. So, the mind is to be developed, it is to be cultivated, it should be, it should be trained, it is all true. Everything is uh, possible only by training. So, the approach should be there. If you don't take training at all, then you will be same as you are before. So, the purpose of religion is no doubt purification of the mind. Once the mind is purified, you will get all the visions of uh, gods and goddesses and you will have the illumination and you will be able to interpret correctly. If a wrong person sees things, he interprets in a wrong way. Sri Ramakrishna would often say, a person who is well advanced in spiritual life would be able to interpret the visions. Sri Ramakrishna himself had innumerable visions. How? Each vision Sri Ramakrishna could interpret in a proper way. How many of us have got that capacity to understand? Sometimes we, we simply because we get some, some experiences in the dream, they may not be true. They may be hallucinations. Just imaginations. How do you know they are the outcome of the spiritual life? So, you must have sufficient spiritual strength, you must have spiritual, moral, moral, ethical, moral, spiritual, all these are important. So then only you will be able to understand and these visions come frequently. Then only you, could, you should conclude that they are real, otherwise they are hallucinations. Now it all depends upon what I say, how we live the life day in and day out. So give importance to practical spiritual life, then everything will be straightened out in course of time. Though in the beginning we are not able to understand, slowly we will be able to understand them. For the time being we shall not give any importance to any kind of dreams. They are all unconnected sometimes. Unconnected. And sometimes the samskaras they come in different ways and present themselves in the dreams. So we are not sure. Maybe some of them may, might become true. It is not that all dreams are false. Some dreams might become true. But on, the, on that account you can't conclude that all your dreams are real. So let us pay attention to discipline the mind, discipline ourselves, and to live properly and so that in course of time we will be able to understand those things. There is no doubt psychic uh, experiences are available, are, are there. One who meditates properly, he does get that. But if your mind is not ready, if you are not prepared yourself to that uh, high state, then uh, it will have reactions in the person. It is just like um, so Sri Ramakrishna himself has said at one place that some people, they were uh, participating in the bhajans. 
Sometimes this singing, bhajans, etc., you know, it raises the mind to high level. They all began to dance. So much so, they forgot everything. Their mind went very high up. They were feeling as if the whole thing is uh, enveloped by God consciousness and they, would feel, they were feeling immense joy, no doubt, because of that uh, atmosphere, environment, that singing and dancing together. It raised their mind. But because they are not used to that, because it is not a steady thing, what happens afterwards when, when that program, everything is over, when they go back home, their mind goes down to the bottom level and they indulge in all sorts of things which are not beneficial to spiritual life. Mind goes down immediately. So going down why? Because they have not trained the mind to keep the mind in that level. So that is why Sri Ramakrishna gives importance to practical spiritual life. Spiritual life in your daily life must be done. What is spiritual life? Prayer, worship, meditation. These things have to be done regularly with full consciousness, with full awareness. We must practice all these things. Whatever things that are useful to a person that takes him to God, that makes him love God, he should do it. That's the way. The point is, meditation is possible only when uh, your mind is free from worries. Suppose you are entangled in too many things, that keeps always your mind in a bad position. So even though you would like to meditate, you will not be able to do it. Maybe five minutes, even five seconds you can't sit. So, the precondition, that's very important, pre-meditative condition. Even to start, before starting meditation, what are the things to be done? You must relax properly. You must try to have some kind of uh, calmness in the mind before starting meditation actually. You must be in that mood for some time, sufficient time. Then you must try to meditate upon. It all depends upon one's own mind. There are many people who, who say it is terrible for them even to sit for a minute. Because when they sit only, all the thoughts will come. When they are engaged, they don't know, they think they are perfectly all right. Because they do not know how the mind is functioning. But when they sit, even though he doesn't want, all those thoughts come to him and jump upon him and devour him. That's why many people ask many times, keep on asking. So it's very difficult to control the mind very difficult to do meditation, how to have some restraint, they say, like that. You know, what you said is also true. If one does meditation properly, even five minutes before, before going to bed, just feel, feel, feel that uh, you are the child of the Divine Lord. Feel that you are sleeping on the lap of the Master or Divine Mother. That's it. Keep in that mood, then get into sleep. You will have wonderful sleep, no doubt. You can give that auto-suggestion. It is possible, but give it sincerely. That's the point. I have found many times, if we appeal sincerely, repeatedly you must appeal, not simply telling once and going away. No, repeatedly you must tell. Oh Lord, please, please do this, please do this. I am being troubled by this, please protect me, please protect me from this trouble. Just uh, you pour your heart in appealing way, two, three times you do it and then go, it will have effect. It counteracts the disturbing forces. Surely it counteracts, that's true. That much I can say. <laughs>
Yeah, that, that's what uh, Sri Ramakrishna is uh, trying to point out. This religious bigotry is being uh, pursued by the people not understanding religion in a proper way. See, when a person hates or uh, uh, tries to harbor such feelings, cannot be considered as a religious person at all. He may be leader in the ordinary sense, but see, really he is not a spiritual leader. A spiritual leader is one who always advocates love and nothing else. So you always try to integrate people in the name of God. Those who want to divide people in the name of God are not considered as spiritual beings at all. That's what I see and that's how I look at it. So Sri Ramakrishna came to point out that why should you quarrel at all? It is simply because some fear, simply because the domination, or if uh, those people become more prominent, then we lose all our position, we lose all our prestige, all these things. So as if uh, religion depends upon position and prestige, it has nothing to do. Religion exactly refers to your inner life. That's all. But then there are various temperaments. You can't expect uh, the same uh, type of tradition which you, which you could follow in India. Here the traditions are different. But at the same time you can't simply pass a sweeping remark that people in the West cannot be spiritual. That is wrong. Because in this environment, in this circumstance, the Western people, they have to go according to their traditions. So a religious person, he respects all traditions, he respects all conventions. But then, where we differ? We differ only when they interfere in other religions. You practice whatever the tradition, according to your tradition, you practice it, wonderful. Do it nicely. That's why Lord Sri Ramakrishna himself says to Divine Mother, Oh Mother, please show me how to pray according to Christian ways. I want to go to church. I want to pray. See? He could have immediately said, No, why the Christians should pray like that? They should all pray in the way in which Indians or Hindus pray. He didn't say that. On the other hand, he appreciated the Christian way of worship also, the Christian way of prayer also. Not uh, simply... Uh, sympathizing, it is not a question of sympathizing it. Equal value, equal value. All the religions are the creations of God Himself, the Supreme God Himself. So, unity in diversity. It's a famous talk by Swami Vivekananda in Complete Works of Vivekananda. If you have not read it, please read that topic. Beautiful. Unity in diversity. That is the ideal given by Sri Ramakrishna to us. If you follow that, wherever you are, you will not be disturbed. You follow your path, be peaceful at heart. And share that peace with everybody who come around you. That's it. <laughs> now the, the point is this. There, people, though Vivekananda travelled from length to breadth of India, before coming to America, he wandered all over the place. And uh, that was the period where, where every state is independent, all the kings would uh, behave in their own way. Of course, there was a lot of poverty, etc. And moreover, we were uh, under British rule. So, people were afraid to express freely there was no freedom of expression. And who would recognize? It's only because Vivekananda came here and spoke in the parliament religions, next day he became world famous. So in order to make our people understand Vivekananda, he had to come to America. More than Americans understanding Vivekananda exactly. And the point is this, he has worked, he worked uh, that problem in two ways. To fight out this poverty 
and to give the spiritual ideas he established ramakrishna mission you must know it was established only for that purpose he immediately he said immediately first of all first of all let us give bread to these people then we speak of religion don't preach religion to empty stomachs because they have no power they can't even sustain their life how can they understand spirituality so first you make them strong make them feel that they can do anything let them develop their self confidence for the time being they are all drowned in superstitions ugly superstitions caste prejudices untouchability all sorts of things they are being tormented and political slavery so sri ramakrishna that is why sri ramakrishna was born and he came to revive the traditions of the great uh, indian culture true at the same time he wanted to he came to america why to integrate east and west to integrate east and west there should be no division at all what the people often call universal brotherhood how can that be established unless you develop understanding mutual understand unless you develop that mutual understanding mutual respect how can you cherish that goal of universal brotherhood it is only through the ideal oneness of humanity it is only practicing this advaitic doctrine vedanta one can integrate all the people and he came here to preach the yoga to preach vedanta at the same time he preached spirituality in our country too he did his best so his idea was that sri ramakrishna's message must be given to everybody it's not meant only to india meant for every one let everybody take it whom sever takes it is blessed that's the idea and he came to america to raise the prestige of our culture to raise the prestige of uh, the vedas from that time onwards people began to respect look there are people who are so wise who are so intelligent we didn't know at all so a strong person who could who would demonstrate a strong person himself in a spiritual sense was necessary there were other uh, representatives from uh, india but they were all very narrow minded and uh, not projecting properly our religion it is for the first time she vivekananda came there and uh, gave the proper interpretation of uh, hindu dharma they didn't know before that that's the thing actually swami vivekanand he has told many times there are some areas which are to be worked out by the politicians where religions will not step in so his concern was that uh, economic development and uh, materialistic development all these things must be looked into by the politicians by the government what are they doing are they sleeping it is their duty to do that so our duty too is to give to spread the spiritual message message of harmony peace and joy so he came to the west to make understand the greatness of uh, our culture that's very important it was very important it was necessary also so that was the idea why swami vivekananda came here and preached vedanta and uh, he gave the correct picture of our culture to the people here they were uh, not having that kind of knowledge before that's the thing anyway we shall conclude for the time being now the time is up we shall continue next tuesday chant the name of the lord chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of their heart 
may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names so lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant unceasingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet Oh, how I long for the day when an instant separation from Thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without Thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at Thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of Thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of Thy presence. Though it tears my soul asunder, O thou this who still has the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone O Lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all the joys everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous attain tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be died all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may all the worlds be prosperous and happy May the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be free from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied <laughs>